I've been looking forward to this. What I've done here is connect my laser interferometer to the y-axis of the CNC machine. At the moment, this is set to zero. And I want to see how accurate the travel of this thing is. So the machine thinks that it is at 20 inches. And it looks like within about three or four thousand. Okay, we're back at zero. There seems to be a little bit of oscillation, but I think we'll find that we're back to within a couple of tenths. The reason we get this oscillation is that the interferometer is standing on the floor adjacent to the machine. So, any, so if the machine as a whole oscillates a little bit, or even if I jump on the floor, I can cause deflections like this. And it takes a little bit for these oscillations to die down, but to some extent, to some extent, these are measurement artifacts. I do think that in the end, certainly we are back within a thousandth where we were. In other measurements, I've gone to about two tenths. Another interesting thing to measure is the frequency distribution of the vibrations that this axis is experiencing. <laughs> This is a 20 inch per minute travel. And this is 10 inches a minute.
So, conclusions. I think the actual travel accuracy is pretty good. Maybe 5 thousandths over 20 inches. This is probably as good as I can get with an open loop stepper motor because of the torque ripple. It may be a little worse when subjected to more weight on the table or with cutting load and maybe I can get it a little bit better uh, with tuning the steps per inch but it's good enough for what I want for the moment. There is a lot of audible vibration, especially in the 10 to 20 inch per minute range. There's more at some travel speeds than others, as is common with stepper motor systems. If we look at the frequency plots of 20 inches a minute versus 10 inches a minute, we can see that the fundamental frequencies at which the machine vibrates are not really any different. They sound different to me, but by measurement, they really have the same fundamentals. What interested me very much, however, is the magnitude of these vibrations. How do they compare uh, to the cutting chip thickness? So to check this out, I log the distance data over the 20 inch move. And then I cut off the beginning and the end where the axis was accelerating. And then I performed a linear fit and subtracted it from the data since it, uh, this linear move is what it's vibrating around. If you look at this graph, this is about one second of data and it's representative of what I see. Uh, for the entire travel range. The x-axis here is the sample number. There are about 600 samples per second. The y-axis is in nanometers. And so there is a two and a half or maybe three hertz fundamental vibration. That is the largest um, that we can see. And uh, it's off the scale in the previous frequency plots. Uh, but there are significant vibrations at higher frequencies as well. Maybe the fundamental is caused by uneven pulleys or maybe binding in the screws. I am not sure. But this uh, big deviation accounts for positioning errors of up to 15 microns. Uh, these are happening rather slowly, however, from the point of view of the cutting bit. More re relevant in terms of stress on the cutting uh, bit itself are uh, the large single sample data swings at higher frequencies. The largest of these seem to be about five microns over a single 600 hertz interval. Now, this can be a problem for smaller cutting bits. A, a 1 8 inch end mill may only take a half of a thousandth cutting depth uh, in some materials. And so this can cause uh, really uneven loading and perhaps break the bits, if not dull it fast. However, in my mind, there was still the question of how much the vibration measurement was real and how much was just the machine moving and not the table itself. So I went ahead and mounted the interferometer directly to the machine on one of the mounting brackets. It turned out that this exacerbated the vibration numbers. So clearly the steel cross member to which I mounted the interferometer vibrates more in relation to the moving table than the machine as a whole. And in retrospect, that makes a lot of sense uh, since that member is only screwed to another steel brace, which itself is only screwed into the motor mounts. On the scale of mic microns, it is easy to flex. The machine as a whole is far heavier than the moving table and it will only move a small fraction that the table itself will move for any particular vibration. This would usually be the point to add some tuning in the motor drives or some filtering in the pulse source. However, as far as the drives are concerned, I am stuck with what I've got. The gecko drives only have a single, single potentiometer for tuning and I tuned that as well as I could. The lead shine drive that I have is supposed to have software tuning, but I've given up on trying to find the right software for it. Also, the straightforward answer is servos, 
uh, which run essentially vibration free in my experience. But I'm very curious about what can be done with digital filtering. So I think I will try to switch from the smooth stepper to a Linux CNC setup and see what can be done with digital filtering before I move on to servos. I want to add that I could have done much of this particular investigation using a one micron class scale. And I plan to do that in the future for comparison purposes. But the laser interferometer can do measurements that this glass scale can't, such as angle, straightness, squareness, and flatness. I just have to get the right optics first. 